Hello everyone, welcome back to our video. Today I wanted to talk about a browser that's called iBrewwolf, that's a fork of Firefox. And I wanted to share my opinion on it and if I actually recommend the browser or not. So, from the start I just want to show like the website and what the main features are. So as you can see, the fork of Firefox, as I told you, focused on privacy, security, and freedom. And we'll talk about this in preferences a little later. Now let's see what it promises, what are the main features. So it says no telemetry, no experiments, other noises, and unnecessary distractions. Which I assume that, yeah, makes sense. Private search, which is actually extremely nice. Let me just show you real quick. Is generally a really cool thing. They don't have Google by default. I'm not 100% sure if you can edit. I'm pretty sure you can, but yeah, it doesn't have Google by default. It's just Dr. Go, which I think it's really nice. And it has other search engines that are pretty good as well, like Q1, SearchX, and yeah. It has an ad block by default, which is Really, really cool, I would say, because ad blockers are nice, and having one by default is fine, it's cool. In haste security, it says that they have some security, which I assume, yeah, I guess. Fast updates, I'm not sure how fast this is, but I mean, it's a browser service, so it's pretty fast anyway, and it's open source, which is really nice. Now, what I want to talk about a little is the freedom part of this, which I'm talking about the preferences. Now, what I'm trying to say is that this, it looks pretty good for now, but there are some restrictions on this browser, and I don't really get why. I assume it's just because of the privacy and security, which makes, you know, makes sense, but it also restricts some uh, parts of the based browser, which you know you can change a strict, for example, which I assume is because they have added key security. But you know, it's literally have, for example, autofill against a password. So you can use a primary password can't use this. And yeah, I think that's also nice but also not that great also because look this good but not being able to autofill look is a password it's good but for you know your regular user it might not be that good I say and that's why I wouldn't really recommend this browser unless you are 100% devoted to this privacy, I guess. It's not a bloated browser, as far as I can say, especially the blog page. But, uh, yeah. Now, I want to talk a little about speed, which could be affected because I'm in a virtual machine right now. But I want to talk about the speed between Firefox and Cyberwolf. So, if you open up Firefox, it opens pretty fast, I'd say, but when you open up LibreWolf, it takes a little more, I'd say, to actually open it. Now, that's uh, alright, I guess, it's not taking too long, but also the search seems a little bit slower, so my opinion on this browser is that not that bad for security and privacy. It's great and decent, but I wouldn't really replace it like Firefox, where you can basically just do like the same settings and with a little bit of common sense. I think I think it could go on better than library. Now I'm not saying the browser is bad, but I wouldn't really recommend it at least on this version to be used as a daily browser. 